This is deploying simple containers in AWS. This is video one of the simple container series, and we're going to focus on taking that Python microservice and deploying it with the AWS App Runner. Now, there is a also a video out there called AWS Autoscaling, where we deployed Flask microservices using EC2 instances and autoscaling. What we're going to do here is take that exact same microservice from that uh, autoscaling video build it as a container and then deploy it with app runner so you get pretty much the same thing but through a different set of cloud technologies so in this video what we're doing is we're going to use DynamoDB for the persistent data storage just like we did in the aws auto scaling one we're going to use um, we're going to containerize that application code that that simple microservice using docker then we're going to push that docker image into amazon's elastic container registry Finally, we'll deploy the an instance of that container using AWS App Runner. App Runner is a another serverless option from Amazon, which means you you don't manage the servers. The servers there, um, but you don't manage it. You say go run this, and it does it for you. Um, so let's go to the diagram. Here's the diagram for what we're going to build. The first part of the build, we are going to build a Elastic Container uh, Registry. Then the second phase, we're going to build the container image and push it into the Elastic Container Imaging. Then we will instantiate a App Runner instance on the third part of the build. It will pull that container, and then it will interact with DynamoDB. And of course, we have to have roles for both of these activities. You have to have a role to pull the containers. You have to role to interact with the, um, the database. And so at the end, we'll have this four HTTP endpoints um, outputted and available to be used on the public internet. So we've got some prerequisites here. You got to have an AWS account, obviously. You have to have an AWS CLI. You have to have the latest Terraform. I recommend Postman for testing, and then you need Docker for actually running the container images or building the container images. Now, is this your first time looking at one of our videos? I suggest you go to our AWS and Terraform easy setup. It walks you through setting up a very simple project. It just deploys a VM, make sure you, you know what environment variables to set, all that good stuff. So I'm assuming at this point, all of that has been set up. So I'm going to copy this right here. Um, go to my Ubuntu development environment. Hit paste. Do is we want to make sure that everything's set up from our perspective. So check in VSH is a script we run. And it'll go and make sure you have AWS, make sure you have Docker, make sure you have Terraform. And then it will actually make a connection with those uh, environment variables you've set to make sure that you can connect to Amazon. So that works. So what we're going to do is run apply. OK, the build has finished. So what we'll do is uh, the validate script ran. We're going to take this URL here and let's uh, copy it and then go to the web browser and do a simple smoke test to see if the test endpoint is there and it's there. And so what I'll do is go to the Elastic Container Registry section. Uh, registry that I a repository I created so there is that there's go into the container and you've got the flask app rc1 which is the docker container we built with the flask microservices so that's it for the um, repository information it do, did run a scanning it found nothing on there all all three of them run scanning to see if you have any vulnerabilities um, which come, can be a little bit annoying sometimes because it's very thorough um, but, you know, it's, it's good to have that type of scanning running to make sure you're not having some old code that's running that has particularly, uh, uh, you know, bad vulnerabilities. So let's go back to the main section of the console, the home page. And now let's go look at the App Runner instance. It's running. It's that domain that we looked at before, that HTTPS endpoint. And if I click on it, 
the first thing you'll notice is there's this logs page, which is awesome because if you ever tried to find logs in Kubernetes without Grafana or some other tool, it's like rooting around in the dumpster. So this is another point of making it simple. There's the, you know, the actual containerization log, which is here, which will give you errors if it, if it hasn't, but there's also like, if you want to do, get a log on your container, like a kubectl logs in the container ID, it's just right there. You just click, click on it. Um, and you can see exactly this is what your um, container uh, emitted when it used the startup script uh, that you define. And here, just it's starting the Flask services. The configuration is, you know, what image are you using? It's an Amazon ECR. Uh, you pick, it's, it's serverless, but you do pick, okay, how many CPUs and memory do you need? I picked the minimum because I'm trying to keep it simple. This is where you define the Flask has an exposed port of 8,000 and it'll be routed to 80. Uh, and then finally, the, the auto scale. And I think I talked earlier and I said it was 80 to 100. It looks like the default is now 100. And so this is the default configuration. I think there's more advanced configurations you can put in here, but this essentially says, okay, if one of my microservices is getting more than 100 concurrent, uh, connections. Let's go ahead and size it up one to 25. Again, these are defaults so are perfectly controllable. And then the last section is the, the health section, check section, which where you're going in and making sure your instance is still running and it will repair itself. If one of your instances go bad, goes bad and it stops returning a health check, it will take it out of service and replace it. Connect this to a VPC. Say you wanted these microservices to be uh, available to your own network, but not the public internet, which is most of the use cases that I use in my professional life. Very few things are publicly available, but here it is in the networking section where you can say, okay, use the VPC and the VPC can be, be a transit gateway to wherever you, you need it to be. So I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to say clear and I'm going to run validate and I'm going to grab this guy again. Copy. And once I have it available, I'm going to bring up Postman. I'm going to put that in there. And this is the first endpoint, which is good to go. I'm going to hit it send through Postman. Uh, the next one, next endpoint, we should give you just Jones Smith. That's the second endpoint. The third endpoint is, and that is, uh, the percent 20 is the space. It's the uh, escaping for space. And click on that, and it's going to show you John Smith. And then I can put Mike in here, change that to a post. This is the fourth endpoint, send. And then if I go back to uh, candidates and I say get, it should show me both. And I'm going to be a good steward of my account and I am going to uh, delete everything. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say destroy.